Hi everyone, in uh, lots of my mathematical universes that I tend to float through, there's been some questions about certain types of inequalities and I wanted to cover them uh, really quickly and most of the ones I'm going to do are special cases. So um, these are the ones where you kind of eliminate the variable. I have a video on uh, special cases with equations, but I realized I didn't really have one for inequalities. It works the same basically, but um, anyway, let's look at the first one that I have up here. Negative 8x plus 7 is less than 4 plus 3 times the quantity 1 minus 6x. So draw your line here. You have to do the distributive property first, just because of the nature of the order of operations and whatnot. I tend to bring everything down so I can see it. I'm very visual. Um, I'm looking for like terms. The 4 and the 3 are both uh, like terms here. Remember, do not add 4 and 3 before you multiply because distributive property comes first. But now you can because it was 3 times 1. So I get uh, 7 there minus 7x. I'm going to move, I tend to move variable terms from here just because it gives me a better idea of what's happening in my problem and end up with negative 2x plus 7 and 7, I subtract 7 from both sides, end up with negative 2x is, I don't know why I put equals there, I think I was just thinking about something else, because it's not an equation, it's an inequality, which is the problem. Um, in an equation, I could just say x is 0, and I'm happy, and the world works great for me, and whatnot. But in this case, um, I can't. I need to finish through the last step, and it's because of the idea that if you divide by that negative in the last divide, uh, it's going to flip that inequality over. So I am dividing by a negative here, negative 2. So I'm going to circle it to remind myself to flip. So 0 divided by 2 is, of course, 0. So that relationship stays the same. But since I divided by a negative, instead of being less than, this is actually greater than. And then I can graph it. I'll go to 0. I don't fill it in. And then I graph it up. And remember to read the variable, uh, read the inequality from the variable side. So x is greater than. It doesn't matter that 0 is less than per se. And it certainly doesn't matter that the arrow happens to point that direction, because if it was this, You'd have the exact same graph, even though the arrow points uh, to the left. So don't fall for the arrow points thing. That's kind of a problem that I've been seeing as well. Um, so that's if it is 0. So you can get a 0 as your starting point for your inequality. That could be the limit of your inequality as far as that goes. Um, the next type is this one. In this case, I get a little bit of a different result. So I'm going to. Uh, negative times the quantity 1 minus 3r is greater than or equal to negative 1 plus 3r. And I'm going to distribute a negative 1. If you don't see it there, it's there anyway. Uh, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And then I've got plus 3r. Uh, I, like I said, from here I tend to move the variable term. The opposite of plus 3r is minus. Now I've reached a quandary. These cancel and so do these. So I could put 0r on both sides, or I could just look at what I have left. Anytime I eliminate variable terms, you're in a special cases situation. And if I were in the room, I'd be making the air quotes right now. Um, special cases mean no solution or all real numbers. Uh, identity is sort of an equation thing, exclusive. So all real numbers uh, is the one you want to plug in for inequalities. Now, whether, how I make that determination is to look at what statement is remaining. Now, I could add 1 to both sides and make that statement, but I can just do it from here, really. Uh, is negative 1 greater than or equal to negative 1? And it is equal to negative 1. So I can say that, yes, this is true, which means my answer is all real numbers. And I'm doing the terrible thing where I use that symbol for numbers. But all real numbers here, because this is true. It is equal to. Now, it doesn't have to be both. It just has to be one or the other. Uh, but if it said negative 1 is greater than negative 1, so if this equal sign wasn't here, that's not true. Negative 1 is not greater than itself. It's the same. So in that case, it would be false. But here, it's true. So we say all real numbers, and all your graph should be graphed in. And what all real numbers means is that no matter what value you plug in for r, uh, because it cancels itself out, you're going to get a true statement anyway, because negative 1 is greater than negative 1. So r can be a million, it could be uh, negative 60, whatever you want it to be, and it's still going to leave you with that truth that negative 1 is greater than or equal to negative 1. So uh, let's look at another type. I have to flip up because the program I've been using, uh, which is infinite algebra, which is great, by the way. Um, 
is uh, allows me to um, it, it automatically creates some and not all of them are uh, special cases no 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 so in this one once again I draw my line here and I want to start out with my distributive property if you have a negative in front remember it really means negative one negative one times a has negative a negative one times negative eight is plus eight Now I'm going to move my uh, combine like terms. I forgot about that. 8 plus 8 is 16. Remember, if numbers are on the same side of this line here, you just combine them the way that it tells you to. So this is 8 plus 8, so I'm going to do 8 plus 8. I'm not going to go and subtract 8 from both because they're on the same side of the line. Same side, same operation. Um, I'm going to move the A now, like I spoke about earlier and remembered I needed to do something else. Those cancel, and these cancel as well. So my statement is that 16 is less than or equal to 8. Well, obviously 16 is not equal to 8, and even more obviously it's not less than 8. It's more. If it was negative 16, the answer would be true, but it's not. It's not true at all. So if it's not true, so not true, your answer is going to be no solution. And what that means is that no matter what I put as A, it's still not going to be true because the value will cancel itself out. So once again, A could be a million or it could be negative 60 or whatever you want. And no matter what you plug in, since it cancels itself, you're left with a statement that's not true at all. Um, so you don't graph anything because the graph shows the answers that are true or make it work. And nothing makes it work, so you don't graph. Um, one more, and that's it. And I think it's just one more like the others. I just wanted to... Sometimes I like to do four because... I don't know. I just felt like I wanted to do four, four of them, even though this is number eight. So I've got this set up. I'm going to draw the line. My distributive comes next. It's negative times negative, so it's positive 40x. Uh, I don't automatically bring down the plus. Watch the other videos. I pretty much use the same method always. Uh, negative 20. Uh, now from here, it looks like, oh man, this is one of those weird ones again. If you are the type of person who moves your uh, uh, constant terms first, like you move the 20 first, you'll get this. And then I get a lot of question marks on papers at this point. There is a way that you can do it. I still have to combine my like terms. So I could write 50x plus 0 if I wanted, if that helps remind me in any way. And 40x plus 0, that's fine. Uh, but eventually, I'm going to have to move plus 5x over, so I have subtract 5x. You'll get 35x. And on the other side, you're just left with this 0. So this is going to be one of those ones that you uh, do 0 divided by a number. The nice thing here is that you don't flip because that is positive. So I'm going to end up with x is greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to go to 0, I'm going to fill it in, and it's going to go up. So you can get answers that are 0, but work them all the way out. You, If you eliminate your variable term and it, you get a true statement, then it's all real numbers, and you want to draw all the whole thing to show that any number you plug in works. And if you eliminate your variable term and it's not true, it tells you some lie, like negative 3 is greater than positive 7, whatever. You just uh, put no solution, because nothing you do can make it work. Uh, I hope this helps and makes that a little bit easier to grasp.